At Risk's project tool includes several modeling tools that make it easy to apply ranges of possible values to schedule estimates. One of these, the parameter entry table, is the topic of this video. It creates a table where you can enter ranges of possible values for items such as task durations. To use a parameter entry table, you first need to import a project into Excel. To do this, you should select Import MPP File from the Project dropdown on the At Risk ribbon and locate the file Parameter Entry Table MPP available from the At Risk example files to import this project into Excel. I won't save this file for right now. Then you should select Parameter Entry Table from Model Tools on the Project dropdown of the At Risk ribbon. The goal is to create columns next to your schedule where you can enter values such as minimum, most likely, and maximum values for task durations or other schedule values. As you can see, there are a variety of options you can use when creating a parameter entry table. The field dropdown lets you select the type of data you want to enter ranges of possible values for. For now, you can select task duration, a common source of uncertainty when scheduling. The Using Distribution section lets you select the at-risk distribution that will use values from the table. These values will create a probability distribution that specifies the range of possible values for each task's duration and their relative likelihood of occurrence. You have many options here, but for now you can use the triangular distribution, which takes minimum, most likely, and maximum possible values as arguments. You can also select a variation that will be shown in the values in the table when it is created by at risk. By using 10% below and 10% above, you are specifying that the minimum and maximum of each triangular distribution are respectively 10% below and 10% above the most likely value, which is the original deterministic value in the schedule. In any case, you are not limited to this default range. Once the table is created, you can edit the table values directly in Excel to customize the range for any task. In the Build Entry Table section, you can choose to build a parameter entry table for all tasks in your project or just selected ones. For some projects, you might want to apply a range of possible values to every task in the schedule. For others, you might want a table only for a group of tasks. For this illustration, the parameter entry table will be built for all tasks. When you click OK, you get a warning about overwriting values with distributions. You can click OK for this. Then your worksheet in Excel includes three extra columns where the minimum, most likely, and maximum values for task duration are shown. Also, risk trying distributions have replaced values in all task duration cells. At this point, you can change the values in the parameters entry table as you like. Because they are arguments to the risk trying functions, these distributions will change automatically. Now I will add an at-risk output and run the simulation in the usual way. It is easy to update your parameter entry table to see how simulation results change under different assumptions. For example, you might want to apply a 50% maximum rather than the previous 10% maximum to each task duration to see how results change when there is a higher probability the tasks will take longer than expected. All I have to do is change this to 50%. Overwrite? Yes. Now the maximums are higher. Another useful option is to add the table to your MPP file. This option is at the bottom of the Parameter Entry Table dialog box.
Again, I'm warned about overwriting. That's okay. I won't save the table. Now, if I look at project, I see that it has three new columns for the parameter entry. From here, schedulers can enter their estimates without having access to your Excel model. So a scheduler might change this value to 150. Later, when you reopen your Excel workbook, the MPP file will automatically be opened and its new estimates will be updated to your Excel spreadsheet. Alternatively, you can select Sync Now from the project dropdown on the At Risk ribbon to update your Excel spreadsheet with new values from the MPP file. There's the new value. So now they are in sync. At Risk's project tool allows you to build a risk register that can be included in a simulation of a project schedule. A risk register lists possible risk events that can impact a project schedule and its costs. Typically, each risk event has a probability of occurrence, so that it either occurs or it doesn't. If the risk occurs, the size of the impact of the risk is typically also uncertain. To learn about risk registers, you can open the Excel file Simple Risk Register. This file is in the At Risk Example Files and is linked to a project MPP file of the same name. It has already been opened here. Remember that this also opens the corresponding MPP file in Microsoft Project. An Excel worksheet is a good place to build a risk register. The row and column format makes entering a table of risks straightforward. At risk can be used for defining distributions that determine whether a risk occurs, and if so, the size of its impact. In this case, the probability column shows the probability of a given risk occurring. Risk discrete distributions entered in the simulated occurrence column use this probability to sample whether a risk occurs. If a risk does occur, it causes a schedule impact, sampled from a risk PERT distribution with min, most likely, and max values shown in the schedule impact columns. The risk can also have a cost impact, sampled from a risk trying distribution with min, most likely, and max values shown in the cost impact columns. Of course, you can use any of that risk's distribution functions to model impacts in a risk register. Once you have built a risk register, you need to link it to your project schedule. There are different ways to create the link. The simplest method is to add a simulated schedule or cost impact directly in a formula in Excel. This method is used for the environmental risk in row 6. The corresponding link is in cell C5 of the tasks sheet. During a simulation, this formula calculates the duration of the cleanup task by summing two values. First, the PERT distribution generates a base distribution from 25 to 35 days. Then the impact of the environmental risk from the register is added, but only if this risk occurs. Risks from a register can also be linked to a schedule using risk project functions. One of these functions is called risk project add delay. The effect of this function is to add an additional task and associated costs to the schedule if a risk occurs. The idea is that a risk event often does not directly impact the schedule and cost of an existing task. The risk event can instead cause a new activity to take place with its own duration and costs. In this example, the customer design approval risk in row five results in an additional task and associated costs being added to the schedule if the risk occurs. This new task will take place after the original design task, perhaps due to added design revisions and reviews. The new task has a varying length and cost as calculated in the register. When appropriate during the simulation, 
the at risk function risk project add delay adds this new risk related task after the design task. You can look at the formula in cell V5 on the register sheet to see this function. Its first argument is a reference to the task in the schedule where the new task will be inserted if the risk occurs. In this case, if the risk occurs, the new task will follow the design task, B3 in the task sheet. And the existing successor tasks to design will now come after the new task. It is as if a new task with its own duration and costs is dropped in the middle of the schedule when the risk occurs. A second risk project function called risk project add cost adds an additional risk related cost at a time specified. When a risk event occurs, this function adds a cost only to the project's cost calculations. In this example, the material price risk in row 7 results in an additional cost being added to the project when this risk occurs. This risk could be additional raw material costs that are incurred anywhere within a specified time frame. When appropriate during the simulation, the at risk function risk project add cost adds this new risk related cost to the cost calculation in project. You can look at the formula in cell V7 on the register sheet to see how this function works. Its first argument is the amount of cost to be added. In this case, it is a reference to cell S7, which in turn has a formula that multiplies cells D7 and R7. Cell D7 determines whether the risk occurs with a value of 0 or 1, and cell R7 determines the amount of the cost impact, sampled from a risk triangle distribution with min most likely and max values in the cost impact columns. Therefore, the amount of the cost impact is either 0 if the risk does not occur, or the value sampled from the risk triangle distribution. Note that a risk make input function is also used in cell S7. This helps with sensitivity analysis. At risk uses cell S7 as a single input in its sensitivity analysis and tornado graph, instead of picking up the simulated occurrence and cost impact functions as separate inputs. You will see one bar in the tornado graph for the impacts of material price risk, even though this risk is defined by combining two separate distributions for simulated occurrence and cost impact. The linking of a risk register to a schedule is best shown during a simulation. First, you can toggle the at risk dice button to random and then press the F9 recalculation key a few times as you watch the register. You will notice that the occurs cells turn red when a risk occurs. The red is actually caused by conditional formatting. When a risk occurs, values are then shown in the register for the schedule and cost impacts. These are sampled from the at-risk distributions that have been added to the formulas in the register. Now I will run a simulation, and as it runs, I will open the Microsoft Project window. Two new entries have been added, one for customer design approval risk and one for material price risk. If you watch carefully, you will see that when the customer design approval risk occurs, a new task bar appears in the schedule with the design task as its predecessor. The length of this new task changes depending on the size of the schedule impact of the risk. The bar enters and leaves the schedule depending on whether the risk occurs or doesn't occur. Similarly, when the material price risk occurs, a black diamond is displayed at the date the cost is introduced to the project. This cost is then added to the project's cost calculations. If you were tracking time-scaled costs during the simulation, you would see the new cost from the risk show up in at-risk's time-scaled data report in the time period the risk occurs. As simulation becomes increasingly important in corporate settings, it is valuable to save inputs to simulations and results from simulations for later use or exploration. At Risk allows you to do this with its library tools. An At Risk library is a SQL Server database, 
and it can hold corporate input distributions and simulation results. Of course, this requires a SQL Server account. If you don't already have an account, you can download a free version of SQL Server Express when you install at risk. The simple simulation model you see here, adapted from one of the at risk example files, can be used to illustrate the at risk library tools. It contains three input distributions and a single output. Three inputs and one output. You can imagine that these input distributions are the result of much research and many expert opinions, and they might be reusable at later times in similar simulation models. Therefore, it makes sense to store them in a database. This is exactly what the library allows you to do. To add an input distribution to the library, you select one of the input cells and click the Define Distributions button on the At Risk ribbon to get the usual window shown here. You can edit the information in this window, such as the name, as you like. Eventually, you should click this Book button, the Add Input to Library button. At Risk shows this prompt, so you should click OK. Then it opens the At Risk Library window shown here, displaying the input that is about to be added. As you can see, there is also a Revisions tab, so that you can store information about revisions to distributions as well. Again, you should click OK. There is the addition to the library. You can add as many input distributions as you want in this way. I will add two more. Then when you select Show At Risk Library from the Library drop-down, you will see the following list of all distributions in the library. There they are. At this point, the Add button allows you to add a new distribution to the library, and the Edit and Delete buttons allow you to edit or delete existing distributions in the library. Also, you can click this button to enter one of the library distributions in a selected cell. Alternatively, you can add a library distribution to a cell through the Library tab of the Define Distributions window. Any of these. The At Risk Library also lets you store results of simulations. To do this, you run a simulation and then select Add Results to Library from the Library drop-down. You get this dialog box. You can click the Properties button to see properties of the library. Then you click the OK button to save the results in the library. Finally, at a later time, you or your colleagues can see the saved results by selecting Show At Risk Library from the Library drop-down, select the Results tab, select one of the results, and display it in some way. You and your colleagues don't even need access to the original simulation file to see this. All that you need is access to the library, that is, the SQL Server database.